I did a film years ago, not a very good film, um, and the director came out of commercials, and the first day of dailies were incredibly slow, and at the end of dailies, something happened that I had never seen before. We did have dailies in the evening, and everybody in the crew applauded, except me. And the director turned to me and he said, you don't like the material? <laughs> and I said, well, it's very slow. And he said, yeah, but I come out of commercials. I can get everything down to 60 seconds. And somehow, some, one of my evil spirits took over. <laughs> and they said, yeah, but you have to get it up to 90 minutes. And he didn't speak to me again for about two weeks. Wow. And then he saw what I had cut and he said, I see what you mean. But, and then he learned. But he didn't want to. He, and I had never seen, I've never seen to this day, uh, technicians applaud. At the, have any of you? Not really. No, it's the same. Yeah, I, mean, I think on principle they just don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty cool people. Yeah. Well, in the same vein, then, we all get, lately, vast amounts because of uh, electronic shooting, mm -hmm. we get vast amounts of footage. And this is going to be my last question before we show clips, but how do you deal with the enormous amount of footage we get? Well, how do, you, um, how do you look at it all? You don't look at it all. That's okay. that's that's that's, that's actually Thank you. Um, okay. the honest answer. You look at uh, well, you you work your way through the process. You you look at certainly you would look at the circle takes that have been suggested, and as Pierre was saying, you would you would initially maybe work with those. It's only when you've cut those shots down to their actual serviceable use in the scene that you might think, well, I'm sure there'll be a better version of that line and you muck, muck about with replacing sound from one line and all that, all that sort of thing. But um, the process of, of, of putting it together at that stage is, um, how can I put it? And it, it's very hard to, to speak about something that you do intuitive, intuitively, if you see what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> but, but what I'm asking, I, I understand exactly what you mean. That's mm. why we don't talk a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but what I'm sort of asking is how do you deal? OK, Paul Hirsch, who I think will be here later, yeah. um, Paul posted on Facebook the other day that uh, halfway through his shoot, halfway, he has 94 hours of material. And he's working with a co-editor. Right. But that's an enormous amount of film. And how do you well, do that? How I was talking to somebody at lunchtime. What time do you have for... Well, I was talking to somebody at lunchtime about this. And you could be the really uh, mischievous person who would sit down and watch for their working day's amount of time, the rushes. And the production would just get slowly more and more behind. And then they'd realize that they'd shot too much material. But that is not a very helpful way for the production to go about it. Or to you, in or the long me. run. Yeah. In the long run, you get fired. Um, I, I've never had a production that has had an absolutely uh, huge amount of footage, I have to say. Uh, but I do know it happens more and more commonly now because of the process. Um, I suppose the, the film, that, which is going to be something to do with the clip I show, that has had more footage than any other was London Road, but that was a different kind of movie. And you were finding elements of the shots to do with music moments. So that was a very different approach. You weren't um, being given, you know, 100 miles of footage of dialogue or, or, or the like. So I can't speak for someone who's ever been completely snowed under. I think though there's, there's a thing that's sort of slowly happening with sort of a new generation of directors and, uh, of course, this technology, which basically allows you to effectively do the endless take, basically. There is no take. There's a take. You slate take one. The yeah. take one might run for oh, 35, up, 40 up, minutes. Yeah. And there are films out there which they run sort of three cameras, three, three Arri Alexas, and it's actually easier to keep going Rather than just sort of stopping and go, okay, we've lost the thread here. Let's just let's let's just start again. And um, you know, I've 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 seen seen films where you know suddenly suddenly everything will stop. The writers will walk into shot, have a conflab with the actor. <laughs> we're still turning, you know, but no no one's worried about because there's nothing to run out, as it were. Um, they go out, they try it again, 
um, uh, a whole new improvisation may suddenly take uh, take place, and you've sort of got to log it. And you look at you look at the script supervisor's notes. I I, I say notes. It's usually <laughs> note saying various attempts and pickups. Um, and you know it it you know you could you could sort of be a little bit um uh the cynical side of you sort of says well maybe there needs to be a sort of a new discipline in in digital filmmaking you know uh you know it's 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 very easy i mean there's something there's something good about getting things precise and being able to stop reassess go go again i mean that's not to say you still don't shoot a, a lot of takes but just the fact that if you're doing especially a lot of work that's almost like um like sort of comedy, comedy in particular is one element of it that's almost like doc documentary type sort of comedy where there are just, there can just be reams and reams of improvisation. Um, uh, you don't necessarily get the time to sort of sort through it all. The post-production schedule doesn't sort of, you know, that almost never changes. If anything, it gets shorter. Um, and so you sort of have to, you know, get assistance in on the game and sort of help people to try and sort of block it down and sort of go, here are areas that you should particularly look at. And most often than not, you realize that what you all think is funny as a group is sort of what they're thinking on set and what the director is sort of thinking. Um, you know, there are times where you sort of say, oh, hang on, you know, he may come in with the one thing that none of you'd picked up on. He said, why did you try that one? I said, uh, I didn't try it because it was four in the morning and I tried almost every <laughs> other version except, <laughs> except that one. And that, may be the, that might be the one that, that, that he's after. But I think that, that that is a combination of how, you, how, how people are working these days. Um, uh, but also, it, it is indicative of a certain type of filmmaking, which are not necessarily bad, great, great films come from it. But I think, uh, as, a, as an editor, yeah, you just need to have a totally mm. different mindset. I mean, sometimes. it's funny. Uh, I've suffered the complete opposite end of that spectrum sometimes, where you get seven versions of one wide shot. Single, single camera take of the scene, seven versions that they've been working towards. And in my experience, I don't know if you guys feel the same, the, that scenario usually works on take 100, not take seven, because <laughs> <laughs> the timing has to be so immaculate for that to work that if it isn't, then you're in trouble. And often when I see that come in, it's often with a, not, nothing against a first time director, but you know, and often a DP will be in that director's ear and saying, we could do this in one shot and be amazing. There'd be no cuts. And like, it's not as if editors want to cut all the time, they don't. <laughs> but they're always cognizant, they're always aware of timing. And in that, there's very little, I mean, there are things you can do, which I'm sure we've all done, split screening shots if it's a static and trying to tighten up the time in the middle and doing all that kind of stuff. So my point is, even if it's, if, if, you're, give, if you're giving me the choice of one, one single take of a scene that is not going to work <laughs> versus the, the mashup of a many, many different takes, I'll take the mashup yeah. any time. Mm. And like, as you say, time is tight and feature schedule is getting tighter and tighter, but we always find the time, you know? So. It's, it's a hard thing to do. And going back to watching footage, for me, even though I say I don't, try, I try not to bother a director too much during a shoot unless they specifically want to ask for me, but that for me is the way I can see by watching everything, what they're getting at, where they're trying to work towards in terms of performance, in terms of how they change the blocking. You can usually just figure out, okay, this is where they're trying to, and they, that will give me a steer. Maybe I should emphasize certain things because I see that that's what the, they're doing on set, you know? as they hit take 25, so. I assume you don't have this problem. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, we did, we did have it with the, uh, we did a couple of live action films where we had multiple units in multiple countries and time zones, so we, we had more dailies than you can watch in a day, you know, come through, but, but it was different because it wasn't so much performance, it was more action, so mm -hmm. then, then you can just go through your masters, work yeah. out what they're doing, what their developing shots are, and then you can, you know, go through and look for the, where the B camera's picking off the details, whatever. So, it's, so there was still discipline that you could impose on it. And also we, we would rely, and it's a different thing again, but we would rely on the assistants making rolls of stuff that was like, you know, insert rolls or what have you, or select rolls of line readings and stuff. So we'd try and kind of mechanise the process so that, because it was, the, I just remember that kind of crushing burden of 
all that footage to watch and and those films as well were filmed so we were trying to project stuff to check for focus as well mm. so there was that mm. whole thing which I think has got better with digital shooting you don't have that quite so much tension around that yeah. as it used yeah. to so yeah so it's a different thing um, I'm so controlling I have to watch everything um, even if it's high speed and I wish the avid could go faster because <laughs> I, I would do that um, I just find that there might be moments, even before action and cut, that I need to yeah. know every mm. frame mm. that's gone through the camera. Um, I don't know if you find this, but normally I have to send assemblies that evening. Is that common? I was going to ask something on those lines, or yeah. just talk about that, because I tend to send um, the week's work mm. at the end of each week. So, so they've got if they've got a day off at the weekend, which some civilized film mm -hmm. units do allow directors time off at the weekend. So you, you send them something and they can look at it over the weekend and get back to you and they get a, a picture on how it's progressing. Yeah, normally I would do that, but on a couple occasions I had to send them every night right. because they were in a different country right. and they needed to see in order to shoot the next day's right. material. So it was very high pressured, especially when I was getting rushes at lunchtime and then I had to send them out four hours later. So it's, um, and on one occasion, um, I got 20 hours worth of material because uh, on the film I'm cutting now, they shot in an, in an arena for two days and nine cameras. And needless to say, I didn't send an assembly that night, but, mm -hmm. but it's very overwhelming when you get that mm. amount of material. Yeah, sure. um, mm. But you just have to find a way through it. And once you start cutting, like you'll procrastinate and you'll do everything but to sit down and cut those scenes. Mm. But as soon as you start cutting, you just get absorbed and, and you find your way. So. Yeah, I, 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 think, I, yeah, I think you're very right. I think sometimes cutting, sometimes it's very hard. You know, you get in at nine, you sit at the chair and suddenly you start editing. Some, you know, <laughs> it's, it's actually very hard to get that kind of mindset. And it's true. And you sort of look at shots and you go, I've got no idea. I haven't got a clue. And you, you, you know, you go for a walk. You, you, you do everything. Yeah. You do everything but edit, and you just sort of look at the screen, and it looks back at you, and nothing happens. And then, and then after a while, one shot, it, it is literally, you find, okay, well, I'll try. You know, I'll put that one, and I'll watch that take, and I'll okay. And then something organic develops. Clicks, I think yeah. that's that's what it happens, and and actually that's what I find. Particularly when you sort of get into, for me, when I get into sort of watching rushes, and like you, you watch everything. I watch everything because you don't, you just don't know what you're going to, what little hidden gems are there. I find that I watch everything. I make little notes, and then the assemble for me takes place really, really quickly, and I almost get into a kind of a, a kind of trance-like state. But you just sort of go, that one, then 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 that one, and you know the cuts may be a little bit sloppy, um, and the edits aren't right. But it's just your initial response to learning, you know. And by watching take after take, you're learning how the actors are doing it. You're learning how the actors are developing it. You'll you'll get a feeling of how the director behind the camera is 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 pushing things, and then and so that for me is a very very quick process. Then the long process of then watching it, trimming it, then that whole minute, you know, detailed bit. And then, you know, what you may have started at four in the afternoon, you think, well, this has only taken two hours, it's suddenly half ten <laughs> in the evening because you just get absorbed in yeah. it. But I think that's, mm -hmm. that, for me, that's the thing in it. You know, I should never feel bad. It's like, I'm sitting here and they're paying me and I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. actually sort of editing. Because for me, it's means and ends. If the director says, oh, I'm coming in in a week's time and we'll sit and watch it, as far, I, as, far as I'm concerned, you've got a week. Whether you're editing at three in the morning or three in the evening, you've got that time. Come Monday morning, 9 a.m., you've got a cut. You need to have it and an edit ready to show the director. But for me, it's, it's, it's means and ends. Uh, but totally, it's by its nature, by watching things repetitively, <laughs> it's a kind of form of brainwashing. So you're never walking away from that. No. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. You go home, yeah. and like I'd sit there, and I'd be watching TV or watch music videos, and then all of a sudden I go, now I know what to do. Yeah. Mm. And it's and it's like then you'll maybe go back into work or you might have it with you and you just continue the work. So yeah. you're absolutely right. It's never the idea of sitting down at nine o'clock is actually abhorrent at times. You know, I mean, it's the last thing you want to do is is hear this right now. But you got to go through that daily process. Yeah. Of uh, of kind of reinvigorating yourself. Yeah. yeah.
which is fun, which is the luxury, yeah. if I can use that term, luxury. You allow yourself during the assemble period, yeah. you know, in the fine cut, the director's there, 8.30, you're on, yeah. you're rolling, you're moving, and, you know, you've got a limited amount of time. The yeah. producer's coming in at 4. You're showing it to the studio at the end of the week. So that's that's when you're really yeah. sort of probably putting hours in. But I think there's a thing where you can fashion, where, you're, where you know, your little bit to be creative, really, where it's just you in the room. Um, is actually a really, mm. or can be a very pleasurable. You, you make it sound more exciting than the actual <laughs> finished film, <laughs> somehow, <laughs> which I like. I don't give a false impression. We really enjoy what we do, but it's uh, yeah. Oh, we all do. I think. Otherwise, yeah, of course we do. Why would Absolutely. we be here?